So I want to kind of further investigate other services you can use to deploy Next.js and just kind of like weigh out which ones seem like they're better in terms of developer experience and also which ones seem like they're better in terms of performance. I will say before you even invest watching this video, I did not put thorough research into most of this. I basically just clicked through their setup guide, went through their wizard, connected it to my Git repo and deployed it and now i'm going to show you some network request times to see how long stuff takes so i have a next.js application set up that is basically just a single landing page with five different components i guess this is actually six components and these are just tailwind components directly grabbed and copied from the tailwind ui so the free ones and this is what it kind of looks like you got like different sections some images that will kind of use the next image um, optimizer and that's it. So let's just go through left to right. There's no really organization to this video. The first thing I want to kind of talk about is Amplify. I know I just made a video about Amplify and unfortunately Amazon just logged me out. So I can't really show you even the dashboard for it because I'm too lazy to log in. But regardless, I made a lot of videos about Amplify. Um, I still think Amplify has a really good developer experience if you use like the dashboard. When I say Amplify, there's a bunch of other things that are kind of bundled in Amplify. You have like the the DynamoDB stuff, the database stuff, you have the Cognito stuff. I'm not talking about any of that stuff when I say Amplify. I'm specifically just talking about deploying a Next.js application as a host web app option when you click through the Amplify console. So don't conflate the terms. I know there's a whole Amplify CLI command you can use to like set up a project and deploy stuff. I am not talking about that. Anyway, we got that deployed to Amplify. I would say the developer experience for Amplify is actually pretty good. I give like 8 out of 10 maybe even a nine out of 10, you basically log in, you connect to your Git repo, it detects you're using next and it just deploys everything. Like it's, it works, it's nice. Now, the only caveat is that video I made a couple days ago with like the caching issue. If they could fix that or allow you to configure how stuff is cached, I'd be more willing to use it on a smaller scale project. I'm not gonna rehash that whole thing. So we have this loaded up the amplifier right here. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh so that my stuff gets warmed up. Again, when you're deploying to serverless like environments, there's cold starts, your lambdas have to warm up. Usually one or two requests will warm everything up. And now let's just do a single request. I have cache, disable cache turned on. And I'm gonna walk you through some of these request times. So overall, most of these are coming back with under 30 milliseconds. Okay, the image optimization stuff is like under 20. Fave icon's 152 for some reason. Um, it's kind of weird, but Okay, so these are getting hit in CloudFront, so they're pretty fast. I mean, this is pretty performant. Everything's like sub 30 milliseconds. I'm on the East Coast, I think. So again, the performance for Amplify, I think is pretty good. Um, and the developer experience is pretty good if they could just fix a couple of things. So let's move on to the next one. I also have an SST deployment using that same exact code. And this has a package called OpenNext, which allows you to basically deploy a Next.js application to your Amazon account. And the benefit of this is that your stuff is not abstracted away. You, you have the details of your CloudFront distribution. You can look into your Lambdas. You can look into your CloudWatch logs. You can look into all the stuff. It's not abstracted away. And it gives you the flexibility to use the SST library and CDK to manually configure your infrastructure as code if you need to configure or change stuff. I like this because if you look at the code, they give you ways to change the caching behavior inside the CDK code, right? I can just uncomment the stuff and I can change how cookies are cached. And that, I made a whole video about that, but this gives you more flexibility. If for some reason Amplify is not working the way you need it to, using something like Open Next and SST gives you that flexibility to kind of configure things the way you need at the cost of you have to spend more time understanding how to do all this stuff, right? Understanding how to write infrastructure as code, understanding cloud formation is CDK, and then on top of that, understanding SST, it's a lot of overhead to learn all this stuff. But as far as getting it set up, it was literally just running these three commands and you have a fully working next application with like a, a little URL. So let's look at the actual deployment here. It's the same exact code, like I mentioned. And we're gonna go ahead and refresh this page real quick. Make sure stuff loads. And now let's compare some numbers. So let's move this up. So right now, these numbers are much, much higher for some reason. I don't know why they're so much higher. Um, I, I saw it be much lower a second ago. So let's try doing a refresh to see. Yeah, we're getting like 60 milliseconds for this stuff. So if I were to compare like app, 67 milliseconds, are we getting CloudFront hits? We are. So for some reason, this is actually taking a decent amount of time longer than Amplify. I don't know why, because I literally tested this like 10 minutes ago before I started recording and Amplify and 
the SST deployment were kind of on par. They were the same load times. But now for some reason, a lot of these are much higher in terms of load times. And by higher, I mean like 50 milliseconds. That's not too bad, right? So just to kind of show you that, maybe Amazon's having like a slowdown. Let me refresh this a little bit and see. Yeah, again, Amplify is hitting like 23 seconds every time. And uh, this one is just a little bit slower. I don't know why. All right, let's move on to the big guns. We got Vercel over here. Vercel, again, is probably developer experience 10 out of 10. This is the best thing you could probably use if you don't mind spending 20 bucks a month for your web application or your next JS application. I don't think you, you can beat this. And again, in terms of developer experience, you basically click a couple of buttons, you connect to your Git repo and it automatically deploys everything. It's on par with Amplify. I just think that the Vercel dashboard is like, um, it leaps and bounds better in terms of like analytics. For example, if I go to my project dashboard and I go to usage, I can get a breakdown of like all the bandwidth and stuff that's being used. I can get a breakdown of like what endpoints are being invoked, how long those endpoints take to run, how much bandwidth is being used from those endpoints. I get a nice breakdown. And these are the things you want to kind of know about if you ever need to do some type of optimization. So Vercel again, like 10 out of 10 in terms of developer experience. And if you can afford it, like just, just do it. Like there's no reason not to do it. And if for some reason using Vercel, like the network traffic is too much or they, they charge too much, then you can start looking to other options. But let's look at the deployment. So again, we have a Vercel deployment. Notice here in the domain, it says Vercel.app. Same stuff, we got the images, etc. Let me just make sure everything's warmed up behind the scenes and I'll do a refresh here. So let's look at the times here. These times are actually higher than Amplify. These are actually on par with SST. Notice that you got like 67 seconds, 71 seconds, 85 seconds. The images are like 50, 70, 40. Those were on par with um, the SST deployment. And Amplify was pretty much lower for the most part. Like, I don't know what is different between these things. And more specifically, I don't know why Amplify would be much lower than um, the CloudFront deployment for SST. Maybe the Lambdas under the hood have more memory here, so they're faster and they're processing requests faster. Or the fact that I think SST is using an S3 storage bucket for assets would probably slow it down a little bit. I don't really know, but that's, I'm just sharing with you the metrics that I'm seeing from deploying the exact same application to these three services. And I would say that Vercel is on par and sometimes even a little bit slower than the SST uh, deployment. Notice here that we're getting 45, 48, 49, 44, 50. Going to the Vercel, we're hitting like 86, 87. And this could also be my location, like my laptop location in the US is probably different. So Vercel's data center might be further away from me um, compared to Amazon's data center. That is a possibility, I don't really know. This stuff could be deployed to the West Coast. I would hope it's not. Um, or maybe it's deployed to, uh, you know, the Midwest or the West Coast. I don't know. But that's just the metrics I'm seeing. I'm on the East Coast with a simple deployment. These are the numbers I'm seeing. So let's talk about the fourth one, which was Netlify. So the user experience for Netlify, again, was pretty good. I mean, I basically logged in. I set it up with Git repo. I told it to deploy the repo, and everything seems like it's working. I, again, I haven't put a lot of effort into invest, investigating like how everything works. There's something about the dashboard that's kind of just like overwhelming and confusing to me. So I give it like a, again, like an eight out of 10 or nine out of 10 for developer experience. It just, it seems cluttered to me. I don't know. Netlify just seems a little cluttered. I don't really like it as much as Vercel. Um, but maybe it's because it's kind of new to me. Again, every time you use like a new service, you have to like learn how it all works and stuff. But for example, like where do I get the analytics on my stuff? Where do I get the logs on my stuff? Is there a way to even do that? Add log drains. I mean, this is kind of similar to Vercel where like maybe they don't even provide logging for you, which is, that's one thing that kind of bothers me about Vercel and Netlify. Like some of these things don't show you logs until you actually have like the logs up, right? So until I go to this page, I can't see any production logs, which that doesn't work in production. You need to have like an audit trail of the stuff that's hitting your APIs and your services so that you can debug in production when stuff goes wrong. Amplify and SST out of the box. Everything is hooked up to Lambda, which is automatically hooked up to CloudWatch, which means you have every endpoint is going to log out a request. And if an error happens, it's going to log that out for you. I think with the Vercel, you actually have to hook up to a third party service to keep track of those logs. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong about anything, but that's what I've seen with my project. Like you go here, you go to logs and um, 
<clears throat> they have a maximum of one hour. Like that's not going to work. Let's be honest. That's not going to work for a production system. You need to have logs that go back like by days. And maybe you get access to that as you upgrade your plan to the $20 a month thing. But in terms of like, is this thing production ready with like the hobby plan? I would say no, like you need to have logs and you can't just have like depend on just having this thing open. Um, but yeah, overall, those are the kind of the trade-offs between those things. Um, now let's go here with Netlify. Let's just go ahead and refresh the page and let's compare some numbers. Netlify is by far the slowest out of all of these. If you look at these numbers, we're in 113 milliseconds, 117 milliseconds. Um, image optimization, 84 seconds. So this thing is pretty slow. I don't know if they do any type of like caching in front of this stuff or if maybe they're in a location that's further away from me. I think this is deployed to Ohio, which might be further away than like where this other stuff is. <laughs> like I said, this video is not very thorough. There's probably stuff that I'm not thinking about when I'm sharing this information. But yeah, I mean, Netlify seems good. And DX, something about the dashboard I just don't like, but I think it's pretty good. All right, let's move on to... DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean, I really like DigitalOcean. I like their dashboards. I like what they provide you. Um, unfortunately, with Next, let's see, is this thing actually deployed right now? So I don't even know how to get to my application. It says it's done deploying, but how do I get to it? You know what I mean? So like, oh, Live App. There's a big button that says Live App. Let's click it. And here we go. We got the app right here. Let's compare um, metrics here. Let's just make sure everything is load it up here are the run times for digital ocean so the difference i think with digital ocean is that they're probably not doing the whole cdn stuff um i think they're just basically spinning up like a, a docker container that's running your next application cache status i don't know what the cf cache status is um maybe they are using cloudflare yeah it looks like they might be using cloudflare behind the scenes to cache stuff because it is saying a cloudflare cache hit so maybe they do have caching set up. And the performance is actually pretty nice. It's, it seems like this is pretty pretty performant. We're seeing like 30 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds. Um, maybe it's because they're closer to where I live. But overall, the developer experience for setting this up wasn't too bad. I, I think I'd give it like a 7 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10. Like I don't think it was as intuitive as like clicking through Vercel or clicking through Amplify. And let's kind of look at their logs. Do they even give you like ways to export these logs and they, it looks like they just give you a single terminal with like find so in my opinion that's not going to cut it for a production application unless there's a way to like export those things you got access to a console if you want to actually like do stuff on the server for some reason um so like like this this isn't serverless right you're paying five dollars a month for like a running server overall i mean i probably wouldn't personally pick DigitalOcean to run my next app unless i really needed to but I think this is a good starting point if you just don't care about like edge computing and stuff. Now, some honorable mentions. I tried render and it just doesn't work, right? I, it just doesn't work. It doesn't deploy. I tried even going to the render docs and they say, okay, you can go here. You can kind of look at this, this fork Next.js Hello World. Their docs link you to a Git repo that's about two years old. It's on Next 11. So I personally would not recommend render. I could not get my Next app to work. Although I didn't spend much time trying to figure it out um, with these other services basically working with a click of the button, like I would not even bother with render kind of a garbage application in terms of next from what I'm what I'm seeing. And then the last honorable mention is railway. I tried to get a project set up with railway and I've used railway in the past, but I signed up with like my new Git repo that has only been around for like a couple of months. And for some reason, even after entering my credit card, it cannot verify my GitHub account and I cannot use. So that's a big L for Railway, in my opinion. Um, you all need to kind of get on that and fix that because my GitHub account has been open for like months now. And I have like 17, I have a, like almost 200 followers on here. I got 17 repos. I have activity starting all the way back to January. So the fact that you still can allow me to like set up anything, unless I upgrade to a team account, which is $20 a month, um, no, thank you. So Railway, big L there, um, unfortunately, because I do kind of like Railway. But again, it probably wouldn't even be like edge compatible. It'd probably be like a single Docker container that's running your stuff. But yeah, that's all I want to kind of uh, walk you all through in this video. If you guys have an alternative place that you guys like to deploying your next applications, leave a comment below and kind of 
you know, walk us through like why you like using whatever service that I didn't talk about here. And also if there's anything that's kind of um, wrong about the way I kind of pointed out these metrics, let me know. Again, I think this might be just based on my location and different data centers might be further away depending on like where these people host their stuff. I'd have to actually look at like a map and see like where's Vercel versus where's Netlify versus uh, Amazon versus what's the other one? Um, Oh, DigitalOcean. My final remarks again is if you can afford 20 bucks a month, I would just get Vercel. It's going to be the best experience out of all these and the performance was pretty good. Otherwise, if you want to kind of like do your own thing and get your hands dirty with some like DevOps and infrastructure as code, SST is a great option. And then finally, if you don't mind um, some caching issues that I mentioned before, Amplify again is a pretty good solution if you just kind of click through their UI and get that stuff set up. And Netlify was pretty good as well. Um, again, it kind of, for me, it boils down to having access to production logs. And Vercel and Netlify don't seem to give you that out of the box. So I would probably lean again to SST because I care about my production logs and I want to be able to kind of search through when exceptions are thrown. Anyway, if you enjoyed liking this, be sure to comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to hang out with some other developers. Have a good day and happy coding.